Look, you've probably heard us say this before. We don't have a weight loss problem in America. We have a keep the weight off problem. In fact, a lot of people lose weight when they try. In fact, some people hit those goals. But the vast majority, almost 90%, don't keep it off. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to set yourself up for success. How to stay consistent so you don't become one of those statistics. This one was a big challenge that I constantly revisited and tried to figure out for my clients. This was probably the big, of all the challenges, this had to be the biggest ones. Like, how do I get people to stay consistent to do this for the rest of their life? Because that, that it was frustrating. It was so hard. It was frustrating because, like, it, I mean, you pour yourself into these clients and you look back at sort of uh, all the different experiences each one of them had, and you're like, man, how did I not reach those ones in the very beginning? And like, where did that all go wrong? And, you know, revisiting that. And then later in my career, figuring out all these little things that needed to happen along the way to keep them engaged and into it was crucial. Totally. I think a big part of that is because we're in the service based business, right? Where someone comes in, they pay for personal training from you, and then they tell you what their goal is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, it, especially when you're a young trainer, um, you're a little intimidated to say something like, oh, let's not do that yeah. goal that you're yeah. paying me for. Or even <laughs> tell you how to do it. Right, right. Or let's, you know, how about that's our big goal, but let's set some small, I mean, to have a conversation like that, to challenge, you're just, you're grateful that someone's going to invest in you and you're trying to build your book and you're trying to service your people and you're not trying to create waves. Uh, you're learning how this is not a good strategy. So you haven't even fully figured it out. And so I think that's part of the challenge is that you got clients that are telling you uh, what they want and and writing you a check at the same time. And so there's this bit of like, I don't want to tell them that's a so bad idea. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want to ruin the, the, the their, process. Yeah. Themselves. Do you guys remember what point you <clears throat> looked at the clients that you had trained and you said, oh man, like, a lot of them got results, but almost none of them kept those results. Do you guys remember when that? Well, happened? yeah. What I what I remember most about that was <clears> actually, <throat> and that's when this all kind of came together. Is it's such a small percentage of of clients have like like long term success, even with hiring a trainer. Like that's, I mean, we're like in the baseball business, right? If you're batting, you know, thirty percent, you're 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 kicking ass, and so after you've done this enough times, you start to look back at like, okay, what was unique about the 30%? Like, what was it about those three out of 10 or two mm -hmm. out of 10? What do they all have in common? And you start to piece together some of these things like, oh, they had more realistic goals. Mm -hmm. We were more patient about the way we did things. We, and like, we were more into the process. And you start to realize like, oh man, the people that come in all gung-ho, super motivated, have this crazy lofty goal or tell you things like, I'm going to, I took the whole summer off and this is all I'm going to do. Like, you know, they had that kind of biggest loser mentality going in. Those almost always fail. Yeah. And, and the ones that had a, uh, I think a healthier approach to it were the ones that had the most success. I think it was also too, a lot of the clients that had those kind of uh, blinders on, like they just wanted to do it all by all means necessary. Like just, hand me the sheet of the things I can eat. I don't even care. I'm not even tell you like what I really like. I'll just do whatever you tell me to yeah. do. And, and I was always like oh, excited about that as a new trainer. I'm like, wow, they're really bought in and they're going to, you know, get after it. And you know, that was so misleading because it wasn't, it wasn't adopted as their lifestyle. This was just a means to an end. And yeah. once you get to that end, it's like there was no forecasting of how we were going to continue this. Yeah. Well, the data is clear. Again, I've said this before. The, the data is clear. People, millions, millions of people lose weight every year. Almost none of them keep it off. So <clears throat> if you're listening to this, thinking about how to keep the weight off or keep whatever results you get is actually more important than how to get them in the first place. Uh, everybody focuses on how to get there. Nobody focuses on the after. Okay, well, if I do get there, if I do succeed and get there, which is hard, how am I going to maintain it? And people tend to think, well, I'll figure it out when I get there. No, you won't. No, you won't. Again, 90% of everybody um, ends up going backwards. Today's program giveaway, Old Time Strength. This is a strength training program based on the way strength athletes trained during the bronze era of strength training. Great stuff, lots of wisdom, build incredible stability throughout your entire body, build an incredible back, glutes, and core, and you can get it for free. But here's what you got to do. Leave us a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we got a sale. 
That same program is 50% off right now. MAPS Old Time Strength, half off. MAPS OCR, Obstacle Course Racing Program, is also half off. If you want to sign up for an obstacle course race, follow this program. It'll get you ready. They're both half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Adam, you mentioned setting goals. I think this is the first, the first most important thing, which is to set appropriate goals for yourself. And for coaches and trainers listening, help your clients set appropriate goals. Now, I know what the data says, like with weight loss, for example. The data will say that if you do everything right, if you change your diet appropriately, if you exercise consistently, you can lose about one and a half to two, maybe two and a half pounds of body fat a week. And I remember when I learned this as a trainer, and this became the way I set people's goals. Oh, you need to lose 30 pounds? It'll take us 15 weeks because that's what the data says. Well, the data is based off of you doing everything perfectly. And in my experience, nobody does yeah. everything perfectly. And if somebody like did that. do everything perfectly, they definitely didn't maintain it. That's just not how humans work. So appropriate goals is how you start this out because disappointment, you can only withstand so much disappointment, especially when you're trying something new, especially when you're sacrificing certain things, sacrificing the way you live now. Maybe you don't, you're not eating the way that you used to. You're taking time out of your day or maybe you used to watch TV or do something else to go exercise. And if your goals are not appropriately set, then you're just going to be disappointed. <clears throat> if your goal is to lose 15 pounds and you lost five, you're not going to be happy. If your goal was to feel better and you lost five pounds, you're excited. Wow, what a surprise. I lost five pounds. I feel better and I lost the extra five pounds. This is incredible. This makes a huge difference. And I would always, always towards the, towards the back half of my career, this is what I would always do. People would tell me their goal. I would tell them, this is what the data says. If you do anything perfect, then I would explain to them, nobody's ever done anything perfect. So the reality is losing 30 pounds is going to take you a lot longer than 15 weeks. It's probably, probably going to take you two to three times as long as that by doing things relatively consistently. And if you don't, it's going to take even longer than that. And that's just the reality. Do you want to stop or do you still want to do this? Yeah. And almost everybody says, I still want to do this. But we have to set the precedent right right out the gates, set those appropriate goals. It takes a bit of thought. And I mean, the, the best analogy immediately that's like the total obvious one is like the snowball effect like if you're you're taking on just a little bit at first it's like it's something that you know you can accomplish it's something that's not like such a stretch outside of your everyday lifestyle and activities um and that's just something you, you start to build you start to build that and then you can still introduce another thing and then another thing but you have to think about all those little accomplishable goals in order to stack them properly yes so that way then it can lead into bigger uh, leaps and, and bigger uh, progressions that you're going to be able to attain, but you have to be able to stack that appropriately. Another, That's another part of this appropriate goals is that um, weight loss is not the only goal. There are other goals, and I would make sure to set these for my clients uh, that are that tend to happen before the weight loss. And so I'd say, okay, I know you want to lose 30 pounds, but here's some goals I'd like to see, and I think that you'll accomplish relatively soon. You'll start to feel stronger. So you'll notice that we're doing exercises that feel difficult today, that as we continue to do them over the next couple of weeks, you're going to feel a lot stronger. And I'll show you, I'll show you how much weight you're using, doing now, how many reps you're doing now and how much you've improved. That's going to happen almost immediately. You should feel better. You should notice less pain and you should have more energy. So let's figure those out. Let's talk about those happening first because then they happen. That's Those will actually happen without any weight loss. And people will say, oh, wow. I'm moving in the right direction. Well, understanding uh, what appropriate goals is too in relation to like um, what a client might think is ideal for them. Meaning um, we could lose 15 to 20 pounds in a month. That's that's possible. If I cut someone's calories hard enough and I make them move like crazy and they come in and they say, Adam, I have 100 pounds I want to lose. I could show them 20 pounds off in a week. And so, but that's not an appropriate goal. And it's not an appropriate goal because I know that it's not the healthiest, best, and fastest way to get them to their long-term goal. Right. Create setbacks too. So, but the, a lot of people don't understand that. I was just having this conversation uh, over Thanksgiving holiday is, you know, almost everything in our life, the, the more effort, the more you put into it, the more you get in return. Uh, you study harder, you try and learn a language, you uh, work hard at a job. 
uh, you get paid, like you get more return for the greater effort you put towards almost everything else in your life. Unfortunately, body composition change is not that way. It's a, it's a, it's a fine line. It's a, it's You're a, working with your body. That's right. It's a science and there's a dance, a delicate dance there with many factors. And so teaching a client that you, you know, it, setting appropriate goals also is showing them not, not only like, okay, it may be possible for you to lose 20 pounds, but it's not appropriate. And the reason why it's not appropriate is it's not sustainable. And I think that's where there's a disconnect with a lot of people is they think that, well, wait a second, if I want to lose a hundred and you're telling me I could lose 20 right now, how is that not an appropriate goal? It's not an appropriate goal because of what is going to happen. And so I think that's a, a part that took a long time as a, for me as a trainer mm -hmm. to understand how to communicate that properly. Yeah. It's like building a visible house. You can do it real fast without building the foundation and I can make the house appear much quicker, but it's not a house and yeah. the, a storm comes by or so knock the whole thing. It's going to come, it's going to come down crashing on top of you. Part of this is to make the approach because you have your goal, you set your goals up, you make them appropriate. And you also have a complete picture of goals. It's not just weight loss. It's not just the way I look in the mirror. It's also energy, mobility, strength, mood, you know, all the things that come from getting more fit and more healthy. And then you set up the approach. Okay, how are we going to accomplish these things? The approach needs to be challenging. And I'm going to start there first. It needs to be somewhat challenging because if something isn't challenging, there literally is no meaning behind it. Okay. There's no room for change. There, well, it, this is also why, look, this is why, um, this you know, gives trust it purpose. Fund, well, this is why trust fund babies, uh, treat money very differently than people who earn it themselves. You know, when you go out and work your butt off, and struggle and make something happen, you have a very different relationship with the money you earn than somebody who just inherits a bunch of money. You can talk to any waiter or waitress who's ever waited on people like this and they'll tell you there's a big difference. So the approach has to be challenging. So you definitely want to make it challenging, okay? But here's the kicker. It also must be realistic. So there's a range of challenging and there's like over here, which is this is not realistic. It'll be very challenging. I'm not working out at all. Six days a week will be very challenging, yes. Is that realistic to go from zero to six? Probably not. So you want to make it challenging, but also make it realistic. Realistic has to be painted in the context of forever. Not in the context of, can I do this for 30 days? Can I do this for 60 days? Almost anybody in the right state of temporary, I'll say state of motivation, will say they can do anything for 30 days. So if you're super hyper motivated right now, because maybe you looked at yourself in the mirror, someone said something to you, you got this event coming up. Well, you'll do almost anything for 30 days. But if I say to you, is what you're about to do realistic for the rest of your life and you're honest with yourself, well, now we've got the, the proper picture. Challenging yet realistic. That's the approach. I would make the argument that it's even further to the left, right? If, you, if you're giving that analogy, if it's the spectrum and way over here to the right is the six days a week and, you know, is that feasible? Yeah, I could possibly yeah. do it. But is it realistic? Probably not. And maybe they even land on three. I would even make the case of even less. I mean, this is why my, one of my favorite sayings is that our goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. And so anything can be considered challenging if it's something that you weren't consistently doing before. So if you weren't working out one time a week, every single week, like that's a good place to start for a lot of clients. And it took me a while to realize, like I could say that, that I could tell a client who's coming in, who's like, okay, I'm a, I'm available to work four day, work out four days a week and me not book them for four days a week. And we yeah. go, you know what, let's do this. When we, cause when I did a good assessment, right, I sat down and asked them about their past and this is the seventh time they've tried to lose weight before. And every time something comes up or happens and it's like, they've had the same pattern of like, they commit to it, they go all in and then they fall off. I was like, Hey, why don't we do this? Since this is, we've, we failed at trying to do this seven other times. Why don't we set a real easy goal right now? But it's, it's different. It's a challenge. It's not something you're doing currently right now. You're going to walk for 20 minutes every single day. You're going to show up to the gym and see me for this. And we're going to cut out that one thing that we talked about in your nutrition. That's it. Those things, those few little things. And that's it. Even though they think they can do more. You, what you just did, I did the same thing. And, and here's why that's important for people listening right now. It's not that you're under, uh, shoot, you're, you're, you're under shooting yourself or you're, uh, you're, you're, you're estimating lower than what you think you can do. It's because when you make these goals, you tend to make them in a motivated state of mind mm -hmm. in a motivated state of mind. will always, you'll always convince yourself you're capable of doing more than you probably can long-term. So if you say to yourself like, okay, well I'm not working out at all. And you know, they said, make it realistic forever. I think I can maintain three days a week. Also say to yourself like, well, I'm kind of motivated right now. So let's go one. 
Let's start with one day because I did the exact same thing. People yeah. would give me the, how much they can work out. By the way, this is what's funny for any coaches or trainers listening to this right now. This was like, sounds so opposite of what would made what would make you successful, but it became key to my success. Uh, it sounds counterintuitive, right? You should tell people to come and show up more. Now you train in more sessions, you get paid more sessions. No, I would convince people to come less and that actually served me better as a trainer, gave them better results and made me more money. Why? They would show up and be more consistent long-term. And of course, if you get people real results forever, you've got clients for life and you've got someone that's, gonna, that's going to refer people to you mm -hmm. for life. So I see that all the time. In fact, uh, when Doug became my client, that's what I did to him. He was waiting to work out four days a week. I convinced him to go too. And of course, now he helped. <laughs> now he's the producer of the show. Yeah, now he built your business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, here's the third thing. Keep in mind, you're not just training your body. You're also training your mind. Now, I don't mean your mind in terms of the discipline and getting used to the pain and what this feels like. That's true. I mean in terms of we have to create an experience with the workout that's going to encourage you to have a good experience or encourage you to have a good relationship with what you're doing. So you're going to want to keep doing it. So encourage a great workout experience. Coaches and trainers, what this means for you is make it enjoyable for your client. For someone who's not a trainer or coach listening, make this enjoyable for yourself. The music, don't do things you absolutely hate, no matter how much they're supposed to be good for you. Fine, don't do them. Something is better than nothing, usually, if you do it right and you're not hurting yourself. Try to make it enjoyable. The more you can enjoy, and also change the frame, right? Change your framing when you're yeah. doing this. If the more enjoyment you get out of what you're doing, the more likely you're going to want to come back and do it again. Or on the flip side, the less likely you are to, going to be to want to avoid it. Yeah, you got to build new associations. And this is especially uh, important for coaches to be able to do that because you have to be able to teach that mindset because not everybody just uh, like has that intuitively. Like it's not something that like, if you're going through hardship, it's not an immediate go-to for a lot of people that are like, Oh, well, I'm going to see the, you know, the positive in this. And I, I know the, on the other side of this, everything's gonna be great. Uh, cause a lot of times we like to dwell in the negative. Uh, and so work a lot of times it gets frustrating cause the results, you know, may not be, uh, something that's an immediate thing that they're going to experience and they're going to have to do some work and they have to make changes. And so to be able to create an environment where uh, we're having fun, we're uh, getting educated, uh, you're seeing little progress here and there, you're getting wins along the way. All of that contributes into a better experience that they're going to replicate. Yeah. I, I actually remember, I just remember this. I had somebody, I was trying to get them to do, be more active on the days we didn't work out. She would show up to the workouts with me, which was great. But we had reached a point in our, you know, training relationship where she was just, it was just really hard for her to be consistent. She's like, I hate it. I hate going for walks. I'd rather sit down. I'm so tired or whatever. I love to sit down and read. And I said, well, what if you listen to your book while you walked? She, and I mean, it sounds obvious. People listening right now, like, oh, duh, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. It was, it wasn't so obvious to her. She thought, well, of course. And I said, listen, you love your book. I bet you'll probably walk further than you would have if you didn't listen to it. And sure enough, that's what happened. She would set out to walk for 15 minutes. She would get caught up in the book. She'd end up walking an additional 15 minutes. Just one simple example of finding ways to make your workout enjoyable because that's very important. It's very important you find a way to enjoy what you're about to do. I think, I think the biggest one out of, because there's a lot of different things that could make it more enjoyable for, for each individual client. But I think the most common theme that I saw was the, the punishing themselves yeah. or feeling like, you need to feel, and I'm guilty of this, like you need to feel like you got crushed in your workout mm -hmm. for it to be considered. Like you survived. Yeah, to be considered it was a good workout. And you don't realize, and you don't realize what a, what a bad relationship that you're setting up with exercise by treating it that way. And it's so ass backwards because I remember thinking to myself, like a walkout, like, let me, like, oh yeah, that was a good workout. And then I'm like, sore for three you or four abused. days yeah three or four days i don't want to do any training after that i don't even want to get up off the couch because i'm so sore and then i also associate like that and i still thinking even after i felt that way like that was a good workout and then the mindset that i would need to get to the gym because because i know i'm that's, that's coming right. that's right and so it's such a it's such a weird relationship that we tend to have with with exercise and i feel that's one of the most common ones that you need to feel that way so shifting it over to I actually want to have this workout and I actually want to leave 
with more energy than what I had coming in. That's really hard for people to wrap their brain yeah. around. They think you need to go to the gym and you need to expel everything you got in you. Just to back you up, Adam, there's a, there's another part to this. Beating the crap out of yourself is not the fastest way to get to your goal either. Because someone listening might be like, well, it'll be worth it to beat myself up because I'll get there faster. You won't. That's not how it works. Now, the occasional really hard workout is totally fine. But for the most part, especially when we're looking at this long term, you're looking at this, you're like, okay, I want to I want to get to this goal. I want to be able to maintain this goal. I don't want to gain the weight back. I don't want to get back out of shape. I don't want to stop. Well, beating yourself up doesn't get you there any faster, number one. You have to work with your body. Every good trainer and coach know this, knows this. Every good athletic coach knows this. You have to work with your body. That means it's going to be challenging. So I'm not saying your workouts are like sitting on the couch, but they should not make you feel like you survived. You should definitely leave, like Adam said, feeling more energized than you went into it. Your body will respond better. Your body will adapt better. You'll build muscle better. You'll burn body fat faster as a result. You won't hurt yourself, okay? It's just a better way to work out. But also, even the the the, the, the greatest masochist does not, will not enjoy beating the shit out of themselves for the rest of their lives, every single time they show up at the gym. At some point, you're going to be tired and you're just going to be like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to go through that that pain and that just, cr you know, hammer. Because by the way, here's the deal. Beating the crap out of yourself, you can always do that. What I mean by that is you become more fit. If you have the attitude to beat the crap out of yourself, you just train harder. And then, oh, now I'm more fit. I'm going to beat the crap. And so it's like every workout becomes survival. At some point, your body's going to tell you, Hey, the best way to survive is to skip this. Well, it also and that message gets real strong. It also promotes this all or nothing workout where it's like I either got to crush it or I'm not going to work out at all. And one of the the best things that I ever did in my own personal journey, not just with my clients, but myself was to give myself that permission of I might just go in and squat today. I might just do a mobility day today. I might do two exercises and then leave the gym. Right. I may work with a quarter of the weight I'm used to working out mm -hmm. with. Like giving myself that permission that that's what I'm oh, I'm in the mood for today and that's how I feel so therefore I'm just going to go do that and it's not a waste of time in fact it's a it's a great idea to potentially do that based off of how I'm feeling because of sleep and food and all other factors and it wasn't until I gave myself that did I become even more consistent with my training and so and I think that's what we're looking for from ninety plus percent yeah. of these clients it, is to teach consistency it masks the signals that your body's already given you right. right if you're pushing through all the time. If you're not really listening and being in tune with your body at that point, uh, because you're trying to force it in a direction that, uh, you know, your body's trying to signal and tell you like, Hey, maybe not as much today. Uh, we need more recovery. Uh, we need to eat more, we need more sleep, whatever it is. Uh, we're ignoring all of that thinking that just the workout itself is going to provide us to the process. Look, it's like, I have, I had a friend who, um, you know, I, I, I didn't go to, uh, to do formal education. I, I worked, um, in big box gyms. And then I was an entrepreneur and I had a friend that went the other route and did the formal education. And both of us enjoy reading. Both of us enjoy learning. And I, you know, when he was in college, he, he was forced, he had to consume a lot of information for his degree. He had to read a lot, whatever, hated it, hated every second of it, graduated, never, he, he stopped, he stopped trying to learn. He completely stopped. Now I had a different experience with learning. I didn't have that experience of I'm being forced or whatever. So different frame. And I never stopped. I'm still doing it. So this is what happens to you if you beat the crap out of yourself all the time. Not only do you not get the best results, not only will your body probably plateau or you'll hurt yourself, but you're going to develop this relationship with exercise where you're going to stop. You're going to stop. And that's the bottom line. It's not going to be able, you're not going to be able to maintain it, even if it does get you good results, get you good results. Now, the next point is to point out the progress and the wins to yourself. Now, this is a broad category. Okay. You have to be where you place your focus is what you end up seeing and where you're not focusing, you miss. So you're probably already watching the scale and you're probably already looking in the mirror. Okay. That's fine. Also pay attention to the reps, pay attention to the weight you're lifting. Those are also pretty obvious. How about pay attention to the energy that you have? You wake up in the morning. Do I need as much caffeine? Wow. When I get up off the couch, I feel so much better. That knee pain seems to be going away. When I do physical work around the house, I have more energy. When I play my kids, I get on the floor mm -hmm. and I can play with them and I don't feel so out of breath or wow, look at all these grocery bags. And I'm, you have to really focus on all of the different wins that you're getting because fitness 
is a lot. It's a lot more than fat loss and muscle gain. It's a lot more than changing how you look. That's the evidence of the, of the fitness, but fitness itself produces a lot more than just those things. And if you don't point those things out to yourself and trainers, if you don't point this out to your clients, then they're going to get caught up on two metrics and they're going to be disappointed the entire time. I actually think of all the things that we're talking about today, this is the most important. Um, when it comes to making this a, a lifestyle and, and exercise and weight training uh, and making good food choices, it, this becomes something that you do a way of life forever. The only way I see that happening for people is that they've learned to attach to all those other things. Yes. Because even, even if you've mastered the nutrition and the working thing and you've, you've presented a, a body that can get up on stage and win amongst the one percenters, then, then what? You already, you know, once you've, or you've lifted the most weight in your category, now you're the strongest guy in the gym or the strongest girl in the gym. Now what? You know, at like one, why keep going? Yeah. At one point, if, if you master the nutrition and lifting thing, you, you hit those, those superficial goals, you will eventually hit those. You'll eventually hit the, your PRs in weight. So you'll eventually get the look that you want like that. And then what? And it's those, those other things, those that will keep you going. Like I, you know, you. I, I think the things I think about now that, get, that gets me to go to the gym is is exactly what you said. I notice I'm a better father and I'm a better husband when I get my work on it. My mood's improved. I'm more, I'm more useful around the house. I'm more likely to get up and support my wife with cleaning and doing dishes and doing things that I wouldn't feel like doing. I've connected that. I realized like, wow, when I... When I don't want to get up and help, it's also the same day that I didn't want to get up and go to the gym. When I get up and go to the gym, it seems to promote that. I'm more active with my son. I'm more willing to get down on the ground and play with him and wrestle and do that. When I don't, I feel lethargic and tired. I want to sit on the couch and be lazy. It's like, and man, those things, being a, a, being a good father, being a good husband, a, a good leader in my family, those things have trumped any physical goal I ever had for myself or any PR in the gym that I'd ever want. And that's the stuff that gets me up and go and go inside the gym. And that's what'll keep you going for a long, so long period of time. And so it's so important for all coaches and trainers that are listening right now. It's so important that you pass this down and you teach this to your clients, because this is what will, in my opinion, of all the things we talk about, this is what will keep them going forever. And if you haven't figured this out yourself, You've got to figure this out because it will make things easier when it comes to being consistent forever. Yeah, look, there, there isn't a single aspect of your life that will not improve with improved health and fitness, okay? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything gets better. Everything gets better when you're more fit, more mobile, and more healthy. And the only reason why people miss all of this is because they don't look at it. They don't pay attention to it. It's funny. When I, when I have clients and I'd ask them these questions – they would always look at me and go, oh, my sleep, it is a lot better. Hold on. This mm -hmm. is really weird. I am sleeping. Like I used to wake up three times. Now I'm not, I'm not waking up at all. Or energy, do I have more energy? Let me think. Well, I used to have three cups of coffee. Now I have one in the morning. Oh my God, my energy is a lot better. And it was always shocking to them because they weren't paying attention. So I used to have to point these things out to them. And then when they were able to connect the dots, man, they wanted to work out no matter what. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's like when you have more energy, you're, you want to get up and you want to do things. You want to be more active with other people. You want to be more social, your relationships benefit. You want to study more because you're in this vessel for personal growth. So it's like, now I'm really interested in this subject and I'm excelling in it now. And I want to stay a bit later for work to accomplish these goals. And I like accomplishing things because it, it, I feel a reward from that. And it's like, all of that stuff is in here, you know, if you look for it. And that, I think that's the biggest thing, like you said, to, we need to point that out a lot more along the journey. So that way people are aware, like all of these things are happening. Totally. Now this journey is going to be riddled with stumbling blocks. This is not a smooth linear progress uh, of a journey. You don't just get everything right and everything moves away. It's supposed, you have to learn. You're going to stumble. You're going to hit some walls. You're going to have to figure things out. And you're going to be tempted to really shame the hell out of yourself. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with a little shame. Oh, man, I, you know, I wasn't, you know, supposed to eat all that. And I did. I just went crazy with that pizza or whatever, that, that, that cake or those sweets. So a little bit's okay, but don't get stuck on it. Because uh, one of the things that we like to do when we feel really terrible about ourselves is make that feeling go away real quick. One of the best ways to do that is eat crappy food. This is one of the main non- nutrition-based reasons why people eat. So people say, well, the obesity epidemic is people are hungry. Eh, kind of. The other part of it is uh, it feels 
good and it's distracting to eat something that tastes really good and is enjoyable. And if you're feeling crappy about yourself, well, you're going to want to eat some crappy food. And then that crappy food makes you feel crappy and you're going to want more of that. Well, shaming the hell out of yourself because you stumbled is a great way to get yourself to not want to go back again and try again. So it's okay to say, I screwed up. You got to be honest and firm with yourself, but also say, it's okay. It's okay. This is part of the journey. I'm going to see if I can go longer this time without making a mistake than I did previous. Listen, uh, no bad meal, no work, no missed workout, no uh, bad full day of eating has ever put a pound of fat on anyone, either lost a pound of muscle in any of those things. Where you, where people go wrong is they fall off the wagon and they spiral out of control because they have one bad meal or one bad day or miss or one workout. Week. And then they then they spiral out of control and just say, oh, fuck it. And they write it off. It's like the truth is like, so what? It was a rough day. It was You're busy. You didn't get around to it. Or you made one bad choice with your, your meal this week or this day or whatever. And then you just get right back to it. I think we think that that a, a day or two like that is is making this massive setback. It really doesn't. And a lot of times it could it, it messes with a client subconsciously because you got to understand that if you or in a calorie deficit, you're training every single day. So you're pumping the muscles up full of blood and fluid so that you look, you look more muscular and defined. The skin, the skin is tighter. You're eating less calories. So you're probably less bloated. You're less inflamed. You're less water retention. And then you go the opposite. You miss a day of working out and you eat all bad all day. And so then you eat foods that are probably holding on to water. You feel bloated. You didn't pump up the muscles. And so you have this extreme feeling that you have from just one day of, of being off. And a lot of times that fucks with people's psyche and makes them think that, Oh man, I'm just, it's like, no, it ain't that serious. You didn't, like I said, you didn't put a pound of fat on. You didn't lose a pound of muscle from that simple little mishap. It's okay. Get right back the next day. In fact, sometimes that little hiccup along the way sometimes supports us. Sometimes you needed the extra calories. You're mm -hmm. on a calorie deficit for two, three weeks straight. You hadn't over ate on calories for a while. If you get right back on the horse and you train the next day and get right back to eating a good balanced meals, you'll probably see benefit from that little day off. And I think teaching clients to, to view it that way, I think you'll see them become more consistent versus how I think they feel. A lot of times they feel... Like that day is is an extreme difference on how they felt because the day before they worked out, the day before they were they felt leaner, tighter, firmer, and then all of a sudden in one day they felt like, oh my god, look what I did myself. And then at that point they go, oh f it, give it all back, and then they just keep on going. And it's really the keep on going down that path, the spiraling out of control. That's where that that's what hurts you. Yeah, right what's there. that saying? It's not about how many times you get knocked down, but it's about how many times you get up. 